Talking music. We do it all the time. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 466 is with Xavier Cornell from season 21 of NBC's The Voice. I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. A beautiful day across the planet, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so now, where where are you today? Where where you know where you because creativity can, can grow anywhere. But where in, in your place of now, where are you? Yeah. So right now, I'm in New York City, actually, which is <laughs> quite a ways away from where I was when we filmed The Voice. I said I lived in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. The mess cup. But yeah. So I'm studying musical theater at Manhattan School of Music. So. <laughs> that's, what, that's where I am right now. Was that a culture shock to go from from uh, New York to to L.A.? Because I mean, I, I I went from Carolina to Los Angeles, and I fell in love with the city. There's a good vibe there. Oh yeah, New York is like completely different. Like nobody drives anywhere here. Like L.A., <laughs> it's all about you know like having your car, having your own little space. And that's the thing about New York that I always say is like you're never alone anywhere you go. Like it's so hard to find alone time. Like even in a restroom like you're never alone yeah. so that's probably the biggest thing but yeah I, I love it it's it's awesome it's definitely different though yeah that's one thing that I picked up on because my daughter graduated from uh, UCLA so we spent a lot of time out there in Los Angeles and I always felt like that that creative people you know come one come all be you're, you're welcome mm-hmm yeah, hundred percent. But at the same time, I was also in New York, and I, you know, New York has you know got that vibe about it as well, and it's you know it's got so much history and everything. Oh yeah, New York is very like, it's very rich. It's always, <laughs> I feel like it's always moving. Like they say that the city never sleeps. It's always just. Bo- 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 <laughs> so when when you get that phone call that says Xavier, um, you're you're going to be in the blind auditions. How do you prepare for those four chairs that are that are you know you're going to be seeing the backs of them? Do you do you turn your chairs around at home and just practice? <laughs> no, not quite. Oh gosh, that was like the crazy like one of the craziest moments of my life it was honestly like a really interesting day actually because i had just gotten rejected that morning from uh pace university which is where i wanted to go to study musical theater so i'm like super down in the dumps all day and then i'm sitting in my bed and i get a call from my producer and he says hey just so you know you're gonna or like as of right now you booked a blind audition and i was like oh my gosh i freaked out <laughs> ran to my mom uh not a lot of mental preparation honestly it was more just like doing paperwork <laughs> <laughs> that was the biggest thing. Just did a lot of paperwork, filming a lot of B-roll, like getting everything I needed to get done. And it was just like, it happened so quickly. And the next thing you know, we were in LA and we're filming the thing. And it's just like, go, 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 go. But yeah, so <laughs> yeah, because it, was, I mean, it all, was a lot to do ahead of time. All, all of a sudden, you've got cameras around you and stuff like that. And you've got, I mean, you've got these these amazing teams, directors and, and you know, even grips and things like that all around you. And you're going, jeez, I, I just, I usually watch TV. I don't participate with it exactly it was it was very interesting like seeing how the sausage was made because i've been watching the voice for so long yeah and i like seeing everybody and hearing people talk about like okay this is the blinds and this is the battles and this is not guys i was like that's not a real thing like that's you like you hear that on tv like you're never you're not a part of that you know but it was just it was so interesting like every every little aspect of it was like wild yeah. Now, my my wife and I have had many conversations about that stage uh, for for NBC. Is is it, it on from where we see it? It looks larger than life. Is it is it big? Um, no. <laughs> it definitely looks bigger on TV. But yeah. It it is a pretty big stage. Like the thing, like especially during blinds, those things behind us, those like lights that light up when they turn chairs, like that's that's huge. But the actual stage itself, I don't think it's really that big but right. i guess the way they film it with the cameras like the angles that they use it makes it look freaking huge oh and the coaches aren't even that far away the coaches are like 10 15 feet away from you the whole time it's crazy whoa see and then you've got all those famous people that are sitting in the front seat i mean they're they're, they're right there in front of you yeah that was freaking ridiculous i remember walking out <laughs> from my blind i wasn't or that's a lie i was pretty nervous but like I, I look over and I see John Legend like doing this thing with his hands, like warming up the crowd or whatever. And I'm like, that's John Legend's freaking hand. And like that, <laughs> that freaked me out all the more. But <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things, the, the experience that you guys go through, do, but you don't, you don't get to hear what they're saying. Like what we do when we're watching the show, do you? Can you hear them talking? 
talking to us? Yeah, well, no, I mean, like, we, you know, when they're when their backs are turned and you're singing, they're sitting there going, "Okay, okay, what what, what do you think?" Okay, and they're, I mean, you know how they talk on the other side before oh, before yeah, they yeah, turn? Yeah. No, we we can't hear any of that. Wow, like, can, none, none of that. Can, can you imagine no if clue. you could hear something like that? How would you push through a storm like that? That would be great. Like, I mean, I guess it would be more of a confidence builder because, like. Whenever they do that, it's like, oh my gosh, like I, I want to turn for this person. Should I turn for this person? And I guess at that point, it's like, yeah, you should turn for me. Watch me hit this high note. Yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> How did you know that sports wasn't going to be your thing? I mean, is, is, it, is it because you come from a, a pretty sports filled family, right? Oh, yeah. My mom, she's an NCAA women's basketball referee. My dad, he was like a big basketball, baseball, football all star when he was in school. So it's like they they tried when I was younger. They put me in sports. Uh, I, I don't remember if it was when I was playing t-ball and I was the kid in the outfield that was like picking grass, <laughs> or <me. laughs> when I was <laughs> or when I was playing basketball and I was shooting balls at the wrong basket. I don't remember when it was that we decided, okay, this probably isn't going to work for him. But <laughs> <laughs> and then and then yeah, did, and then that's kind of where music came into the picture. So so music just kind of just stepped into your life then, or were you, were you always so? Because that's that's one of the things, and I, I I love music so much. I bought forty fives. All of a sudden, I'm thinking I'm I'm going to be a radio disc jockey one day, and people are going, "No, you're not. You have to be good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's yeah. Music kind of came into my life through church. Like that's how I started singing. I was singing in my church as a youth choir, and then just sort of from there it became a love of well it became a love of musical theater from there and then even from that point when i got to high school and i started singing acapella and doing choir and all these things it just became a love of the art of music in general so it was a lot of that and then just like songwriting sort of developed for me in like the last year with the pandemic so it's just been like blast off like no no looking back just like full steam ahead from that point I, I'm so jealous of your generation with acapella, and the reason why is because when when I was in high school, it wasn't acapella. We had to do barber shop, and we had to dress up like they do in barber shop. And it's like, ah, this is not me, man. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I honestly, acapella is one of my favorite things, and like I talked about that on the show a lot. It's just like I love the art of it so much, and I love it's it's insane. We never really realize what human voices can do, like by ourselves. You know, you just take like anywhere from five to 10 people put them in a circle and have them sing different harmonies. And like, that's the coolest thing about acapella is it makes no sense when yeah. you're just singing by yourself. Like if I'm just singing like, gong, 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 dum, dum, <laughs> and like that stuff makes absolutely no sense. And then when you add five, six, seven other parts on top of it, it's just like, whoa, that is magic. You know, and that's, that's my favorite thing in the world. That's one, one of the things that I, I have is I have um, all 42 tracks of Bohemian Rhapsody. And, and the thing is, is that you can go in there and, and you can listen to one track at a time to hear Freddie Mercury singing and then he sings with himself. And, you, and, and it's just the most amazing thing. So what, what you just said is exactly what music is all about. It's breaking down, you know, and what you can put into the piece of art. Exactly. That's amazing. That sounds awesome. <laughs> so, so then the, to, how do you go from a group to a solo performer, or is is it just a mindset? I mean, because it, it's like being with a group. Because you know, like you said, you did theater and all that kind of stuff. But now, Xavier, it's just you on that stage. Yeah, that was that was probably the biggest thing for me. Is like I'm not not used to being on stage alone performing like for myself as myself. That was probably the biggest thing for me, and just like being up there on not just any stage, but the freaking voice stage and having to be like, okay, this is me, Xavier Cornell, as an artist. Like I'm not playing, you know, some random character in a musical. I'm not playing Tevi. I'm not playing Adolfo. I'm not playing, you know, the beast, whoever, like this is me. That was probably the weirdest transition. And that was probably why it took me so long to build my confidence on the show. But once it was there, it was there. How, how did you handle that confidence? But when, when you, when you felt it, it was like, Whoa, the new me has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it, it took a really long time. Like, so obviously blinds and battles have already aired. Like we went into blinds and for that whole month that we were there, I was just sitting to myself, like telling myself, like, there's no way, like I can't compete with any of these people. And then it wasn't until, and even after blinds, like I got, they they aired it in a weird way, but I got Kelly with like seven seconds left. There was almost no time left on the clock and Kelly turned around and I like, I was so grateful, but I was also like, dang, I knew I could have done better. And it just like, and even from that point, we were in the top 48, like all, four coaches said their teams of 12 i was like i feel like i'm 48 out of 48 and i'm always trying to prove myself right so that's why especially when i won my battle that was the moment of like okay i can do this winning, winning that battle what what do you say to yourself when you go back to the room i mean do you start breaking it down or do you start working out for the next song because you know after the battles you got the knockout rounds man 
Yeah, that was crazy. We actually got back to the hotel from Universal and I checked my phone and I had an email saying, this is your knockout song, this is your cut, go learn it. And I was like, oh my God. And we had like two days to get a completely new song down and ready and rehearse with the band and all the stuff. But winning the battle, that was like, that was an incredible moment, like top five moment of my life for sure. Yeah. And just like, it, it was harder for me mostly because all of my friends, like my, cause you know, you're with these people for two, three months at a time. Like all, a lot of the friends that I gotten super, super close with, they all lost their battles and they actually all lost their battle last night. So oh. that's all aired. Jack Rogan, Kayla Grace and Sophia Bromberg and seeing them all leave. That was like the hardest thing for me. And that was so, so difficult. So that was, <laughs> that was a lot of my like post battle was like oh my god i can't believe i'm the only one that made it because i never ever thought because they are all such incredible singers right and the entire time we were rehearsing for battles i was saying like okay you guys are fine it's me i have to worry about like i'm the one that's probably not going to make it and then seeing none of them make it and having me be the only one that was i was like what kind of opposite day crap is this you know like that was <laughs> that was wild but yeah yeah, I've always I've always wondered about that emotional connection because I mean you know how creative people are it's it's a, you know it's, it's a circle and you know you you create your own musical nation is what you do. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like we got, it's insane how close we got in how little time. Like especially during blinds, we had this group of five that was myself, Kayla, Sophia, and then these two, Marco and Serenity, who didn't turn chairs unfortunately. And we, in a month, got so so close and it was so tight knit. And it's just like, it's crazy how that happens. And I think it just, it comes from going through this incredible experience together and it's the same experience and we're all so anxious and we're all so excited and our dreams are coming true, but we're also so scared of being eliminated and it's the stress that you can get cut any day. And it just like really brought us together. And we were, we were just like family, like the whole, all 91 people that were there for blinds, that's just a family now. You know, it's, it's interesting that you bring it up like that because there, there was there was always this story that Elvis Presley and Wolfman Jack didn't get along with each other. The reason why is because Elvis knew that Wolfman Jack always had a stage, but Elvis had to look for his stage. He was If he wasn't on stage, he was unemployed. How, how, do, you, how do you move through things like that, Xavier, that if you're not on that stage, you ain't working? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the life of an artist, honestly. You just got to... I guess the way I kind of look at it is you just got to keep going, keep looking for your stage, you know, and like, especially it's great now in this generation, we have social media, so we always have a stage. Right. So if I, if I can't physically find a stage, I can't find a gig, I can always just post on social media, like do <laughs> TikToks, do Instagram and just grow my brand that way. So yeah. that's probably the biggest thing there. But don't you become addicted though to looking at all those analytics? It's like, I got to see how many hits I've got, man. I got to see who, what, what's the age group? What, what country are they listening to me from? hundred percent. That's probably the biggest like <laughs> risk, I guess, with social media is like you become so enthralled in it and so invested in like, oh my God, like I, at what point should I post? Like at what point is my yep. like peak activity, you know, crap like that. But it, as much as it shouldn't be like it is, and that's just a part of it, but ugh, what can you do about that? I, I, I love it when, when a lot of the promoters and stuff like that will say, um, and what city is this going to be heard in? And I said, uh, all of them. <laughs> it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's wherever you there are, you man. <laughs> and they go, what, what, yeah. what time will it go on? Uh, it's like, it's not about time, man. It's just making sure we get it out there. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I love the transition that you made that when, when, you, when you started taking piano lessons and you brought piano into your life as a performer, do you think that that changed your personality as the, as that person that sings lyrics? Oh yeah. Just like having a whole nother side of music, like, cause obviously singers are singers, but then when you have piano like mixed into it, it's, I remember the first song I ever learned to play and sing at the same time was All of Me by John Legend. Really? And it was like, I, I yeah, I used to play that song every day. And I just, I felt, honestly, I just felt badass. I was like, yo, this is so sick. Like I am singing, but I'm also accompanying myself. And it's just like, almost like two completely different worlds of music colliding. And it's just to make something absolutely gorgeous. Well, you, you you bring up that song "All of Me" from John Legend. You have you have memories like that, and then you you're with him on 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 NBC's The Voice. I, I, I yeah, I'm, crazy, I'm, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm a wedding DJ, and that song "All of Me." I could tell you every story about every bride and groom that had it as their first song. I mean, it, there's just something about that song that you you can't shake everything that's connected to it. Oh yeah, I freaking love that song. That's like one of my favorite songs ever. Do, do, Absolutely gorgeous. So well written. Ugh. Do you dream of writing a song like, like that? 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I try. Yeah. I try my best. I try my shot at it like every day. I'm like, all right, today's the day I'm going to write something great. And then I, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny because Randy Bachman of uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive and the guess who, uh, I was talking to him one time about all these big hits that he's had. And he says, y- you don't understand. You, you know my hits, but you don't know my strikeouts. And, and that, mm-hmm. and that's the thing that we don't know about musicians like yourself is that no, we, we don't get to hear what that didn't make it past your censors. Yeah. That's that's very true. It's a lot of like, I don't know. You hear in baseball, like if you're batting 300, then like that's <laughs> that's really good. But like, in music, it's almost like batting 100. You know, like yeah. one in every 10 songs that you write, you're like, okay, this is this is good. I could put this out there. You know, so like that's probably where a lot of the work comes in. Is like okay, I just have to sit down and write, you know, two three songs today, and like try to write as much as I can this week to find one or two that are actually good enough to put out there, you know? Yeah. How do you, how do you deal with the post-production blues in the way that it's like, okay, I've got this one, I got this one. And all of a sudden it goes, it fizzles out. Yeah, it's tough. I, I usually just like take a day or two to like recoup and That's then it. try to just like get right back at it. Yeah. yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> the life is a creative person, man. Isn't that strange? Yeah. You know, weird, huh? Yeah. Well, they, they do. They think we're weird. So we're, we're just going to prove how weird we are. That's just who we are. Exactly. <laughs> Xavier, where can people go to find out more about you, your music, your story, your journey, and, and, and show you a lot of love? Yes. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Xavier T. Cornell. Same with TikTok, same with Twitter. That's all my all my social media handles is at Xavier T. Cornell. And yeah, I, I just post like, you know, singing videos, originals. Like once once the voice is over, I'm, I'm going to be able to post more original music. I'm oh, actually, wow. I have a song ready to drop as soon as I can. So that's, that'll be out at some point this year. But. See, and that, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's a, that's part of the story that a lot of viewers and stuff like that don't realize just, just because you're not on the voice anymore, your life continues, your music continues. And that's why I'm saying, share the love. You, they've got to be there to share the love. Exactly. So <laughs> as much love as you can give me, I appreciate it. You know, I haven't been on the show for very long thus far. <laughs> you see me for about, one minute total but I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm making music and I'm working I hope you guys can appreciate that I love it man you gotta come back to this show anytime in the future the door is always gonna be open for you and I mean that dude absolutely thank you so much I love I love that <laughs> this has been awesome you be brilliant today okay alright thank you